Hey everybody, welcome back to Sounds Like a Drum Kins Independent Media Production. Today, in the world of hacks and myth busting and tricks, we are using a unorthodox muffling method. Oh. So over the years, we have gone through a lot of different ways to modify or specifically muffle bass drums here. And people have been doing stuff like this to their bass drums since basically the very beginning, going all the way back, trying to control the tone, the sustain, get the low end to come out, just modify it in different ways. And the one that we're doing today is um, most prominently thought of as being a Simon Phillips thing. There's a video from back in the day of him actually going through this process um, on the internet in a few different places. And there have also been products that uh, do essentially this same thing um, that a few different companies have made. Uh, Dave Weckl has been a proponent of this method as well in the past. I've actually never done it to a drum before, and we were talking about things like this that, you know, include a sort of specific kind of choice of heads and get a really specific sound that the player who utilizes it really likes and gets them exactly what they're after. So we decided to see what this is going to do um, and compare it to a couple of other sort of ordinary options. Thanks especially to our Patreon supporters for making this season possible, for making this video possible, and for um, allowing us to keep exploring these things and sharing this information with everybody. If you want more information on how to get involved with our Patreon and help support everything that we do here, you can go to the link below this video in the description. Um, there's lots of different levels, lots of different information, and there's going to be upcoming exclusive series that we are working on right now that are going to be specially designed and built for the patrons alone. So first things first, let's explain what this is. Rather than a pillow or something kind of large inside of the drum, uh, the fundamental tenet of this is that we're not muffling the rezzo head. And uh, in the case of Simon Phillips, he was very specific about this. You will notice though, if you've seen those videos, uses full heads on both sides of the drum and internally mics the drums for the primary kick sound. We are sticking with a ported front head because we don't have the rigging to do an internal mic. So this is basically as close as we can get, but functionally we're talking about the same thing here. So it boils down to this. The first thing you need is a towel. According to him, a hotel towel, you know, he's British and facetious and you know, it's, it's lovely. Uh, we're again, using the towel that we have. He is also pretty much always running 24 inch bass drums and we're running a 22. So today's rig for the purists is a slightly smaller bass drum and what it looks to me to be a slightly larger towel. But again, the effect is basically the same. And so we're just gonna kind of go through the process of application to the drum now. So in the interest of time and space here, it's been folded a couple of times already so we can get it in the shot, but basically it's a big towel that we folded in half like a square and then folded the opposing corners to make a triangle. And the idea here is that when you roll this up, you're gonna be rolling starting with the wide side toward the point. And that will put most of the mass in the center of the roll that you're making rather than just having it be a flat roll where there's a ton of towel at both ends and it's basically even all the way. And once you've done this, you have basically what looks like a croissant, kind of, and at the center is most of the towel, and then it kind of tapers to the ends. Then what we're going to do with this is we're going to place it inside the drum with the thick part at the bottom um, against the batter head. So first things first is we have to take the rezzo head off. Now we're also changing the batter head on the drum to what is essentially the same thing that he was using and I believe uses often now, which is a single-ply clear head. You wouldn't think of that as being like a rock you know, punchy bass drum head necessarily, but it goes with this muffling method and we're trying to stick basically to what we've seen done. We're taking the rezzo off and we're laying the drum on the floor with the batter head side down so that we're sort of looking into the drum and we're going to place the towel along the bottom edge of the head, right along the edge, and then we're going to apply pieces of gaff tape, not duct tape, definitely gaff tape because we don't want to leave a residue on the towel, the heads, or the inside of the drum if possible and we want to stabilize this sort of tube of towel against the head, wrapping up the side of the drum so that kind of at the three o'clock and nine o'clock points, you have the tips of this towel, and then at the bottom at six o'clock on the floor is the widest part. This is gonna give us a really specific amount of muffling and a really specific amount of boost in the low end and definitely alleviate any sort of basketball-y pinginess that we associate with thin bass drum heads and minimal muffling. Before we get into playing the drum, 
one thing that is important to keep in mind again with this kind of muffling which is only applied to the batter head is that the rezzo head is going to be wilder than you might be used to. If I was using this in a live situation as you'll hear in a second I would probably put a felt strip on the front head. Doubly so if it is a ported front head because it's basically impossible to fully get a ported front head in tune with itself because there's mass missing off center. So there's some, a little bit of wobble in the tone that's inherent in that kind of setup but you're going to see the fruits of this experiment and and um, the surprising tone that we get from it. So to my ear, this actually mirrors the sound that I was expecting to get, which is to say that when I play it softly, there's a fair amount of oomph in the tone, and as you dig in harder, it gets punchier than you would get from a pre-muffled head that has some kind of ring all the way around the edge, and um, becomes more aggressive the harder you hit it, rather than um, getting thicker sounding the harder that you hit it. And that is something that I think about when I think about Simon Phillips, and, and to a certain degree other people like Weckl that, that used to use this in the 80s and the 90s, which is that particularly when they pepper the kick in with their toms, which are apparently in all the videos I've seen anyway, also clear heads, uh, it lays with them better. It doesn't sound like a different sort of drum. It's got a closer character to the toms for when they're um, sort of involving the kick and fills and kind of dense ideas and things like that. But also when you play it really softly or feather it, it has a warmer sound and there is a little bit of a point on the notes so that you can still hear that lighter articulation, which if you're going to be dynamic with your bass drum, you definitely want that. Next up, we're going to take the towel out but we're not going to put anything in there. So we're not changing any tuning at all. We're just going to pull the towel out. We're not even going to take the heads off because we've got the port, so we don't need to. And this is going to be the sound of just the two heads. So again, single ply clear G1 on the batter, and we have a ported EQ3 on the front. Now we're in kind of Keith Carlock country. It's real boomy. There's a ton of overtones. Um, it's quite loud and uh, really overtakes <laughs> everything in, in a super fun way that uh, if you can get away with it is a blast and I totally love. But this goes to show you how much of an effect that towel had with no muffling on the front head and honestly not a lot of surface area um, actually in contact with the batter head compared to things like pillows or, you know, just things you might use traditionally that actually touch a lot more of the head. All right, <laughs> behind curtain number three, we're going to go ahead and put the pillow that's been in this drum uh, for the last few months back in. And this is going to give us some pressure and coverage on the front head and also on the batter head. And again, with the tuning we were using before, uh, shed some light on what happens kind of when it's too much muffling. Well, there you go. That um, is punchy. It's very short. It has less tone. We can definitely hear that all of those overtones that were flying around before from the front head have been rendered moot. Um, but also, it's quieter acoustically in the room than the first and second tunings. 
Um, and playing at lower dynamics doesn't feel very satisfying because there's not a lot of activity going on with the shell of the drum and not a lot of kind of pushback acoustically from it in terms of tone and sustain and resonance. For my money, coming up and playing rock music and, and coming up bearing the beater and things like that, I didn't know that I wanted those things back then. And since experimenting with more resonant sounds and bigger sounds um, and learning from drummers like Simon on the internet and elsewhere, um, ways to get away from what you think you're supposed to do and go more toward a sound you like, I haven't been putting big pillows in my bass drums for anything for a really, really long time. I use muffling all the time, but this feels excessive given how much life there was in the drum until we put it in there. It is worth noting that a pillow with a pre-muffled head, like a like an EQ3 or an EMAT or something like that, behaves differently than when you put it in there with a single ply clear batter head because when you're dealing with a head that has more mass to it, um, the way it reacts to the muffling is different. And it's very easy to kill a single ply clear head on your batter side, or at the very least, make it sound kind of mid-rangey and kind of poppy and not really uh, like a bass drum. So if you are into experimenting with thinner heads on your bass drum and you want as much uh, low end as possible, starting with the smallest amount of muffling possible that's doing anything and working your way up rather than throwing a pillow in there and going, ugh, doesn't sound good, um, is definitely the way to go incrementally and check in and see if you like it or not. All right, time for the back-to-back -back comparison. We're gonna do towel, no towel, and then towel versus pillow. To me, as a listener, I feel like these are all usable sounds. Um, if I was going to do a pillow in the drum and I needed a really dead sound, if I was playing like a super big room and there was possibilities of having issues with the low end or the resonance, I would probably choose a different batter head, honestly. Um, we have had uh, EQ4 EMAD on here for a bit and some uh, other things like that that have been very effective with a pillow inside of it that make a beautiful sound. Um, but for sure, for me, with this kind of batter head, little to no muffling um, and being strategic with the muffling is definitely the way to go. Because muffling is somewhat of a contentious issue and there's a lot of options there, um, we all have a lot of stories about that. And I definitely have a couple of stories about this kind of thing that are going to be over on the Patreon as part of the extended content from this video, along with some other playing examples and things. So if you want to hear that stuff, follow the link below, head over to the Patreon, help out if you can, check out what we've got over there. We really appreciate it and it really is making all of this possible. So that about wraps it up. Um, we definitely figured out a beautiful sound out of this drum with this head that was a little more wild than the traditional kind of punchy pop thing, but not so wild as the wide open. Definitely encourage you to try this since it already just kind of boils down to a towel and some tape, which again, we love cheap hacks here. We love hacks that are things that are already in your house. And um, this is definitely squarely <laughs> in the center of that stuff. And thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe and click the notification bell below so you hear about our new videos. We are in season three. We are dropping videos every week at the normal Tuesday, 12.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time time. We would love to hear any any stories you have about this muffling method or any unorthodox or surprising muffling method that you've learned over the years. There's a lot of options out there. Um, we've done packing peanuts, we've done newspaper, we've, we've tried a lot here, but there's, there's always more. Um, and lastly, please do head over to the Patreon, check it out, follow the link and help us out if you can because we want to keep this stuff going for you guys and uh, we really appreciate it. We're going to explore an unortho- <laughs> Courtesy of Pottery Barn. We're going to be exploring an unorthodox method of muffling your bass drum. Today on Sounds Like a Drum. <laughs>